لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صلي وسلم على عبدك ورسولك سيدنا محمد Who attend the last lesson last week? Raise your hand Okay In the end of the last lesson we said what's the main problems that were very common in the pre-era of Islam in Jahiliyyah that Rasulullah with this revelation he came to solve these problems we talk about the shirk but there's many idols either in Arabia or around the world and why we mention these problems for two reasons reason number one is just to show you that all the problems in Jahiliyyah are still relevant all of them they're just different shapes, different types but still relevant the second reason because we'll go through the early revelation we want to know how Rasulullah and he will solve these problems how the revelation will come what's the priority of revelation for all these problems so we talk about the shirk is shirk still relevant nowadays? Do we have some people that still worship idols around the world? Yes, there's a lot. And there's a pilgrimage to these idols. And sometimes 15 millions attend that pilgrimage in Nepal, for example. So we still have idols. We talk also about how they used to treat women. They, some of them used to bury their daughters when they are alive. Is this still, alive, still relevant? How? Abortions. So abortion is a big problem. People think just to go and take some tablets and just... Usually this abortion for many cases around the world, just from a haram relationship, and for this haram relationship to solve that problem, then they now they have these tablets or they have some medicine for that. When you do that for no reason, this is killing life soul. Just by do that, you kill someone in your womb. So that's still relevant also. Number three, what else? What's the main problems in Jahiliya in that time? What do you think, guys? Yes, Ahmed? Tribalism, racism. Is this still relevant nowadays? In the 21st century? Century, is it still relevant? Yes. It's still tribalism, racism, all this colorism, all these types still, still nowadays. Okay, what else? Main problems in Jahiliya. Sorry? Slavery. Very good. Slavery is one of the main problems that time. That's why Quran will talk a lot about this. Slavery, slavery also is still, is still relevant nowadays. But slavery take a lot of shapes and types nowadays. Can you give me some examples of slavery nowadays? And we know that uh, that all when they Columbus discovered the America, and you know they they took a lot of slaves from the West Africa, these people who are the one who built America, Canada, all this South America, which is in very. You read the history about this; it's something you can't even imagine. And uh, so, but I don't talk about that even. I talk about the slavery nowadays in different shapes and types. Yes? Sorry? Ra? So, so people from slavery sometimes, what does slavery mean? It means you try to strict all the freedom of a person, for example and try to establish a rules for that 
If that's the case, we have many shapes, we have many types of this slavery around the world, all the world. Talk about it, inshallah, later. Any other problems? Yes. Yeah. Child labor, for example, I mean, you force someone to work for you. It's a type of slavery, slavery also. That's right. Yes. Inheritance, there's a big problem in Jahiliya at that time. They, they don't uh, involve women inheritance at all that time. That's why there's a long surah, just surah al-Nisa, and talk in the beginning about inheritance. In a way that if you know Arabic very well, you see this is unusual. I mean, a statement when Allah said, لِلْرِجَالِ نَصِيبٌ مِمَّا تَرَكَ الْوَالِدَانِ وَالْأَقْرَبُونَ Can continue? وَلِلْنِسَاءِ نَصِيبٌ مِمَّا تَرَكَ الْوَالِدَانِ وَالْأَقْرَبُونَ For men, they have share from what their parents and relatives left. And for women, they have shares for what their this repetition is unusual in Arabic language. Because he can say for men and women and continue the statement. But to repeat the same statement, for men, they have shares for what their parents and relevance left. And for women, they have why this repetition? Because this was a big problem. They don't involve women in inheritance. And, and nowadays, inheritance, people or laws and rules, every country, they have different rules. Allah said, لا تدرون أيهم أقرب لكم نفع آباؤكم وأبناؤكم You don't know what's the benefit and wisdom behind this. That's why Allah Taala himself in the Quran, he divide all these shares in details. What else? Marriage, many problems in marriage, and we can say the relationships. Relationship between both genders, there is a lot of problems, still also relevant. Riba usually was one of the main problems, economic problems, which Allah Taala, when He talk about the usury, He talk in, in a way that it's a war. If anyone involved in this is a war towards Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you know what the financial system nowadays, they, how they built this financial system, you will see why Allah Taala He made a big punishment about riba. Because you just make the majority of people, they just run, run to find some little pounds there or there and just 1%. 5% of people who dominate all the finance matters around the world. That's another big issue also. There is a German writer, which is non-Muslim. She wrote a book, 1984, I forget the name of the book. She said that she starts the book of, there's four myths, myths, in financial system nowadays number one that if you borrow a money for someone so you expect that he should that money should be increased this is myth because how can it increase for what she said if you borrow one penny in the time of jesus that one penny will increase at interest 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 till nowadays it will become a gold like the earth nowadays three times if it's keeping interest interest so she said why why you expect from me that you will multiply that debt for nothing anyway we'll come to that inshallah so this is one of some of the main problems nowadays number one all the problems in jahiliya still relevant why we said this i want you when you recite quran Always ask yourself, how is that rele relevant to my time? Don't ever think that Quran is for the companions of Rasulullah only. Quran is a history just for people in Quraysh, in Arabia. Quran is for everyone till the day of judgment. 
but with one condition when we reflect upon the Quran when we read in the lens of what does that mean for our modern time you read in from this angle then you will find out that Quran is still relevant nowadays reason number two which now we start our like reason number two is now all these problems how the Quran will solve these problems what's the priority we all know that the first revelation to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in the cave of Hira is the first five ayat from Surah Al-Alaq and you all know, know the story when Jibreel came to the cave and say they grab him and they squeeze him and he said Iqra and he said Ma ana biqari I'm not a reader, I'm not a reciter three times then he said Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم When the scholars of hadith discuss this hadith they arise a question why did Jibreel squeeze Rasulullah sallam three times hardly and then he release him read I'm not a reader. Squeeze him again three times. What, what's the wisdom behind that? What do you think? Yes. So to show him that this revelation, revelation will be very powerful. Good. Yes. Importance of this revelation reading, yes. Okay, no, actually, he didn't wait for that because he didn't expect that at all. That's why when the revelation came, his reaction is very, he said, maybe this jinn came to me, maybe something else, and he get a fever and all of this because he never expects this in his life. And that's for many Western researchers nowadays. This is a sign. There is a, a famous Jewish agnosis, very famous Jewish philosopher nowadays. She has a very famous TED Talks about Rasulullah Sallallahu and about the Quran. She wrote a book about the Muhammad. The title is the Muhammad, the first Muslim. What's her name? Leslie. No, 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 no. Leslie something. Okay. If you go to TED Talks and write or any Google the first Muslim, Muhammad the first Muslim, her book. So she said, when I read the story of Revelation, what I pay attention for what doesn't happen rather than what happened. She explained, said, what I expect if this person, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you want to claim and fabricate a story, then he will said, oh, when I was in the cave, I feel that the light came down from the sky and I feel I'm flying of excitement and I see the whole heaven is like. So she said, if he is going to fabricate something, he would say this. But what will happen is opposite. He afraid about this. He don't expect this. He went to fever and he slowed. So that's a sign that he is honest. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anyway, so scholars said that this squeezing because number one, to differentiate between truth and dreaming. You know, if you are in the cave alone for many days at night and someone came from nothing and squeeze you, it may be something you imagine something. You maybe say, am I dream? Am I imagine something? So when he squeeze you physically three times, that remove this. No, this is something definitely. I feel it in my body. That's one of the... Number two, as you said also, 
it's also indication of you receive a heavy revelation heavy in spirituality so heavy it means this is this revelation will change the course of humanity so let us now reflect upon the first revelation bear in mind it's just five verses from surah al-alaq not the whole surah اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان من علق only five verses translate first اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق read or recite by the name of your Lord who created خلق الإنسان من علق created the humans from a clinging cloth then اقرأ وربك الأكرم read and your Lord is the most generous. الذي علم بالقلم who taught by pen علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم taught humans what they don't know. These five verses had five words, each one of them repeated twice. Just five verses, but it it consists of five. There's five words in these five verses. If each word repeated twice, this is a key of reflection. If Allah repeated something, it means He wants you to pay attention for this. What's these five words Allah repeated? Iqra. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq khalaq al-insana min alaq. Iqra. Iqra twice. Khalaq twice. Al-insan twice. Yes. Allama twice. And Rabbuk. We have we have two nouns and three verbs. Two nouns is Rabbuk, your Lord, and Insan human. So how many nouns? Two. Your Lord and human. And three verbs. We have Khalaqa, created, we have Allama, taught, and we have hmm, Iqra. We have read. Maybe because in the first revelation, this revelation is revelation is from your Lord to the to the human being. So he repeated this nouns twice because this message is from your Lord to all human being to insan. And then three verbs. Two, it just describe your Lord. Why, as a human, you should listen to your Lord? Because he is the one who created, the one who khalaq. He created everything. And then who is the one who also taught, taught a human being? He created everything, but he has chosen the human being and taught them. So that's why as a human you should pay attention for this last message. Then, the last thing, what's the first command in this message is Iqra. Read, recite. Recite or read. Rasulullah we all know that he is illiterate. He doesn't know how to read or write because that's very common in Arabia at that time. All their culture is oral culture. They have a miracle memory. They can memorize thousands of poetry. A khatib came and delivered a khutbah. And majority of people, they memorize the khutbah from one time, when they hear it one time. They have photograph memory. They, they, a, a, a poet came, and they deliver a long poem and majority of them they memorize it from one time so that's why majority of them they don't read or write it's rare to find someone who read and write however the first revelation starts with read because this is the revelation for the all humanity till the day of judgment knowledge is number one Without knowledge, your prayer will be just full of bid'ah. 
without knowledge your da'wa calling people will be very harsh without knowledge all your good deeds you'll do it wrong because you don't have knowledge so knowledge is number one is the first command to rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa'lam annahu la ilaha illallah before you act upon this message you have to understand this message but here allah repeat the verb read twice iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq first one he said bismi rabbik by the name of your lord and in the second one he said iqra wa rabbuka al akram alladhi 'allama bil qalam in the second one he said read and your lord is the most generous who taught by pen taught the human what they don't know in the second time he mentioned the pen he said allah almighty taught humans to transfer the knowledge to the next generation by pen by writing scriptures writing books so there is two type of readings here the first one is a direct from allah ta'ala to his prophets which is revelation and the second one is a secular knowledge which is also from Allah Taala, but in direct way he is the one who taught humans he is the one who give us ability to read and write and so there's two types of knowledge in the first revelation number one is you will receive directly or oh, prophet sallallahu a knowledge from allah Taala, which is the revelation this knowledge will change the all human being will change the history and there is another type of knowledge which is also allah taught humans these two type of knowledge should always go together religious knowledge and secular knowledge when Muslims just said, oh, we just will learn this religious and then we'll leave secular knowledge, their civilization will decline. And if the humans also said we want just secular knowledge without religious knowledge, that will be disaster. To so always go together, to so always have harmony with each other. Because the one who descend the revelation is the one who taught humans also the secular knowledge which they transferred by the pen. The companions of Rasulullah understand this very well. And the tabi'een after that. That's why we have evolution in, in, in knowledge in, in the first century, the second centuries. Look at the Arab. They, they were a people that they don't read and write, just few decades after that, knowledge spread around the world in Muslim countries. That when you look at a scholar like Al-Imam Malik, who born in 93 after Hijrah and died 179 after Hijrah, he wrote a fam famous book in Hadith, it's called Al Muatta. Al Muatta, this book of Imam Malik, spread in Spain and Portugal during the life of Imam Malik. Can you imagine that this book, the people, they write this book, a lot of copies around the Muslim country to reach the Spain. And one of the students from Spain, he memorized that book of Muatta and travel again to Imam Malik and said, I want to take that book directly from you. And that person, called Yahya ibn Yahya al-Layfi, now we have the first copy of Muatta is narrated by this person from Andalus. How these people change their mindset, that they spread this message, travel around the world, because our revelation is start with knowledge. Iqra. Iqra also, when you recite the revelation, we have a revelation which is Allah Taala. when he talk about revelation, he remind us that there is two things we have to pay attention. 
there is a revelation there is a creation ala lahu al khalq wal amr you combine this in many ayat khalq is amr is revelation when you read read the revelation and the revelation will encourage you to read the creation that's why one of the main themes in quran look at the sky look at yourself look at the go and travel in the earth try to read history and take some lessons that's very important type of reading read the revelation and the revelation will encourage you to read the creation read then if you combine these two that's the two type of knowledge again so iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq when allah tabarak wa ta'ala introduce himself to his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam the first thing he described himself alladhi khalaq the one who created because this is unique the human being whatever they reach in modern now time in civilization no one will claim can claim that you can create anything nothing only allah tabaraka wa ta'ala so the one who created is the one who deserve to be worshiped then he said khalaqa twice alladhi who created means everything then he said created the human Allah Taala had chosen from His creation a human being to be number one. That everything in this universe, Allah created it from us. خلق لكم created for you. So that's owner of a human being. And when He talked about a human being, He said, "الذي خلق الإنسان من علق." Scholars. Discuss why he mentioned min alaq. He could say min nutfa from mingle fluid, but he said from a clinging cloth. Why? Because alaq in Arabic sometimes alika it means something, touch something and stick here. That's alaq. This is this mobile phone. In, if it can move now alika. Also that. Blood also, it will stick in the womb of the woman. What does that mean? Oh, human being, you should also stick with the revelation of your Lord. You should have this strong attachment with your Lord. Without him, you can't live. Like the child without that womb, he will die. A human being without revelation. They will die spiritually, and then when he describe himself again, he said, "Warabbukal akram." Allah is the most generous, and when he want to give us example of his generosity, he mentioned that he taught human being. Again, knowledge is one of the most important bounty and favors that Allah Tabarak wa Taala gave us. But people always, when they reach a level of knowledge, they forgot their God. And Allah said, He is the one who taught us. So this is the first revelation. The main lesson here is the significance of knowledge. That's why I encourage everyone here. If you want to spread Islam to non-Muslims, the first thing you have to do is knowledge. You should know your religion very well. Focus on knowledge before you focus on action. If you want to call people, then please try to gain knowledge as, knowledge as much as you can. Knowledge here doesn't mean that you go to one country in Egypt, in Saudi, in Mauritania, and you spend 15 years there, and you said after 15 years I will call the people. That it means you have big, mashallah, tulul amal, that you are have guarantee that you will live long life. Then you will call people. Knowledge here is just depend relative. 
You want to call your co-worker or your colleague at university? Then prepare. Go and watch a lot of videos for those people who debate with atheists or Christians. There's always some main conceptions. You have to be aware of it. Go for some people who have exper experience in this and said, I want to call my friend to Islam. I love for me, for him, what I love for myself. Knowledge is always first. This is the first revelation. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then, after a few days, he received another revelation. Number one is about knowledge. This time, Ya ayyuhal muddathid, Qum fa'andid, Wa rabbaka fa'kabbid, Wa thiyabaka fa'tahhid, Wa rrujza fa'hjur, ولا تمن تستكثر ولربك فاصبر. The first ayat from Surah Al-Mudathir. The amazing thing here is يا أيها المدثر. What does مدثر mean? No. The one who covered himself, the one who wrapped in his clothes. Why? Allah تبارك وتعالى Almighty. Call his messenger, Ya Ayyuhal Muddathir, in the first revelation. Not, Ya Ayyuhal Rasul, O Messenger, O Prophet. And he mentioned this just twice. Only in the first revelation. Ya Ayyuhal Muddathir, then Ya Ayyuhal Muzzammil. The ulama said there is a just. Some of them said he received this the same day. Some said just one day, two days. So it's close to each other. Only, Ya Ayyuhal Muddathir, Ya Ayyuhal Muzzammil, in the beginning. After that, he never say that again. Only in the beginning. The one who, oh, who wrapped himself with clothes. Oh, who cover himself with clothes. What's the wisdom behind that? In the beginning of the revelation. Yes. Yes, that's right. We know the story that when he come very scared and he said, cover me, cover me, cover me, dathiruni, zammiluni. That's the story. But why Allah mentioned that in Quran and call him with this adjective? Yes. Barakallahu feek. Barakallahu feek. Why? It's only in the beginning of the revelation. It, it means the message here is now you have to be active. There is no sleeping after this. There's no time to waste. You have a heavy duty, a big responsibility. Prepare yourself for that. There's no time for sleeping. You are the messenger of Allah to all humanity. That's why, Ya Ayyuhal Muddathir, the one who wrapped, the one who covered himself, Qum, stand up. Stand up, there is no time to waste. And warn people. Now his mission now. You gain knowledge, now you have to spread that knowledge. The mission of Rasulullah is to warn people. And he didn't say, قم فبشر. Go, stand up and tell people good news. No, warn people. Because Jahiliya people there are sleeping. They are far away from the path of Allah. They need someone to shake them. Get up. Wake up. You are far away. So قم فأنذر. So that's why, يا أيها المدثر يا أيها المزمر. Muzammil. Then he said that now Qum Fa'andi is the first command now. First one is Qum. Is the first one is Iqra, knowledge. Second one is warn people. Okay. How? He's only one person. Will warn all the humanity. Now he need what make him strong. Allah said, وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ 
Glorify you, Lord. You know Arabic, again, this is an unusual statement. He could say, وَكَبِّرْ رَبَّك which is, this is normal statement. وَكَبِّرْ رَبَّك وَطَهِّرْ ثِيَابَك وَهْجُرِ الرِّجْزِ That's a normal statement in Arabic. If any changing in order in Arabic, it means to emphasize something. If I said, أَكَلَ مُحَمَّدٌ التُفَّاحَ Muhammad ate the apple. That's a normal order. I can change the order. التُفَّاحَةَ أَكَلَ مُحَمَّدٌ I make tufaha first, apple first. To emphasize. If there is apple in front of Muhammad, so I emphasize this. Not eat anything, look this. So if you change order in Arabic, it means to emphasize. So now he changed the order. رَبَّكَ first. It means make Allah your priority. Glorify only your Lord. Devote yourself for Him. That's what will give you strength, power to stand and convey the message for all humanity. What does thiyabaka mean? Your garments, your clothes. Purify your clothes. Cleanse your clothes. What does that mean? That's why Mufassirin have, they have two different opinions. Some take it literally. It means it's about because he will pray before his Lord. So purify yourself. It means wash your clothes before you. And other Mufassirin, which I support, they said, no, they don't take it literally. Thiyabaka in Arabic language sometimes come to your character and soul. Because the, our clothes cover ourselves. And our moral and ethics also cover our character. So that's why it's mentioned in poetry a lot. So, thiyabaka fatahir, it means purify your soul. Glorify your Lord. And purify your soul. Start with yourself. You need to start with yourself before you convey the message. Be strong. How? By devoting to your Lord. And purify your soul. After that he said, وَالرُّجْزَ فَهْجُرْ It means stay away from all ruz. Ruz it means everything take you away from Allah. Either Mufassirin say idols, evil, or anything else, stay away from it. it. Means now you just devote yourself for your Lord. Then he said, Wala tamnun fastakthir. Don't do something, do favor for people and expecting more in return. That's the strongest opinion. There's another opinion also. Don't give someone. So the strong is don't do a favor for people expecting more in return. Why he said this in the beginning of revelation? It means, oh prophet, you will give a lot. And people, you will face from them something disaster. You will call them to Jannatul Firdaus and they will call you that you are mad, that you are liar, that you are magician, that you are you will face a lot of difficulties. Don't worry. Whatever you give from your time, your effort to them, don't expect return from them. Only your Lord will reward you. Sacrifice everything for your Lord and don't expect return from people. This is very important. You call people to Allah Taala, and they face you with something, they accuse you, they say bad words for you. If this da'wah for the sake of Allah, you will not care. Because you don't expect anything from them. You do this for the sake of Allah. That gives you strength. وَلَا تَمْنُنْ تَسْتَكْثِرْ Last one. وَلِرَبِّكَ فَاصْبِرْ He could say, وَاصْبِرْ لِرَبِّكَ but no, he changed the order to emphasize. It means only for your Lord be patient. 
It means if you want to be patient, remember, Allah will reward you. This is for the sake of Allah. Everything for his sake is nothing. Be ready to sacrifice all your life, all your effort just for him. But this second revelation, we'll find out after, emphasize the knowledge in Iqra. Now what's the mission? Spread this, warn people. And he gave some tools, make him very strong. strong. Devote to your Lord, purify your soul, stay away from what they will say, be patient, don't expect anything from them, that just for you, Lord. So give them tools. The last thing, Ya Ayyuhal Muzzammil, Ya Ayyuhal Muzzammil, Umi Layla Illa Qalila, Nisfahu. أو انقص منه قليلا أو زد عليه ورتل القرآن ترتيلا إنا سنلقي عليك قولا ثقيلا إن ناشئة الليل هي أشد وطئا وأقوى قيلا إن ناشئة الليل هي أشد وطاء وأقوى قيلا Another narration. Inna laka fi nahari sabhan tawila wadhkur isma rabbika wa tabattal ilayhi tabtila rabbul mashriqi wal maghribi la ilaha illa hu fattakhidhu wakila wasbir ala ma yakulun wahjurhum hajran jameela Again, Ya Ayyuhal Muzzammin, the one who rob, the one who cover himself, stand up, Qum! There's no time for sleeping. You have a heavy duty. But this time, Qum illayla illa qali. Pray at night. That's something amazing. That Qiyamul Layl became obligatory to the Rasulullah from the first days. Can you imagine? Not just for the Rasulullah for every single Muslim who convert to Islam, he should, he must pray at night. For one year, then Allah make Qiyamul Layl voluntary for people. One year, Khadija radiallahu anha, she used to pray Qiyamul Layl for 10 years. Do you know that Khadija radiallahu anha? She never pray five prayers, but she pray Qiyamul Layl every single night. Why she didn't pray five prayers? Yes, because five prayers become obligatory after the death of Khadija radiallahu anha. But Qiyamul Layl was obligatory. Why? Allah explained that. Not just Qiyamul Layl like our Qiyamul our Taraweeh in some Masajid. You know there's a Masajid for 15 minutes. This type of Masajid. They finish all Taraweeh in 15 minutes. And you see the park is a lot of cars in that park. I love this Sheikh. Amazing. 15 minutes. No, he said stand up for the night for half of the night. Or a little less or a little more. Can you imagine? Why? He said, Inna nashi'at al-layli. And then he said, recite Qur'an. Ratti lil-Qur'an. Recite Qur'an in a proper way. Take your time. Why at night? He said, Inna nashi'at al-layli hiya ashaddu wat'an wa aqwa muqida. Aw wita'an. Two qira'at. Let me start with wita'. Wita' it means harmony. Means when you recite at night, what you say by your tongue has a harmony with your heart. It means your heart can understand easily at night. So the tongue and heart go together, especially at night. When there is peace, everyone is sleeping. Ashaddu wat and wat, when you go, when you walk, this is wat, you put your feet on the ground. You find this footstep. It's called wat. Footstep is a mark on the ground. Also, when you recite at night, 
it make a mark in your heart why because night is special allah the one who created you he said that that when you recite something at night while you are praying you'll understand it you'll feel it you reflect upon it because of the secret of the night so it's more impactful and suitable at night why not in during the day you are over occupied during the day with your duty worldly duties now the, the command here is just there's a second command وَذْكُرِ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ وَتَبَتَّلْ إِلَيْهِ تَبْتِلًا That's amazing. The second command after قيام الليل is اذكر اسم ربك. Mention the name of your Lord a lot. And تَبَتَّلْ What does تَبَتَّلْ mean? They translate it in English Devote yourself completely to your Lord and only to your Lord. Tabattul in Arabic is from inqata'a to cut yourself from everything and focus on only one thing. You have an exam tomorrow. You say to your parents, I will make tabattul. It means I will take, I will leave everything and I will focus on my exam. That's tabattul. Allah said, Tabattul li Rabbi. Make that devotion for your Lord. Mention his name. Stay for one hour, two hours, three hours. Just reflect upon the glorification of Allah. That's what he gives you power again. And then he said also, in, and then he mentioned the name of Allah. In the first revelation, he said, You Lord. The second revelation, Wali Rabbik, You Lord again. Here he mentioned a new name of Allah, which is one of the first name Allah mentioned to his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rabbu al-Mashriq al-Maghrib la ilaha illa hu fattakhidhu wakila. Ismullah al-Wakil is one of the earliest names that Allah mentioned to his Prophet. Wattakhidhu. He is the Lord of the East and the West. For everything, so take him and only him as a trust of affairs. So wakil is when you trust someone, give him that task, and you are have peace. I don't. I am now. I'm very calm. I give it to that person. I trust him fully. He said, "Trust you, Lord, because he will face a lot of difficulties." Trust you, Lord. Eventually, all these people will convert to Islam. They will say, I, I'm a liar. I'm a magician. Trust your Lord. Just be patient and your Lord will never. Don't lose hope. Whatever happened, say, Ya Wakil. And Allah to help you. So these three revelations in the end, Allah said knowledge and then the mission and Muddathir Muzzamil in the beginning just about what make me strong to carry this mission is to glorify my Lord, to be patient, purify myself, Qiyamul Layl, and Kathratul Dhikr, a lot of Dhikr. We need this, guys. We need this if we want to spread the message to our relatives. I mean, to advise them to become a good Muslims. Or non-Muslims nowadays, we should purify ourselves first. We should pray at night first. We should devote ourselves to our Lord first. We should have a lot of dhikr, a lot of sabr. We should always reflect upon Ismullah al Wakil. Allahu Alam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Rasulullah Sayyidina Muhammad, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alam. What time, Maghrib? Now, okay. Any one or two questions before we go to the Salah? Yes. No, religious had a lot of meaning. So some of us find al-asnam. Some of us find al-riz is uh, zina. Some of us find al-riz is anything literally in Arabic, thithful. I mean, something is, is what's called, um, so something, you can say evil. 
anything devil or evil is riz al adab huna yeah because they don't like it so it's come from this term also yes. okay yes Very good, very good question. Very good. So he will stand up for half of the night and there is just few ayat, what he will recite? It's a good question. He will repeat this a lot because the, the, the point here is not the words, the point here is what the feeling and glorification to his Lord. So he will pray to rak'as and devote in this and sit down and mention the name of his Lord a lot, reflect upon the universe. So it's just a khalwa, isolation with Allah. Wa just when you do in i'tikaf in Ramadan, do i'tikaf. What you do in i'tikaf is what Rasulullah and his early companions used to do. It's just devotion. Allah